Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone. As we get into God's word, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the mercies that you shower upon us. Your mercies are renewed every morning. We commit this word into your hands. Lord, let the word go with thy power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Not anything of me or anything that I have done, but be glorified in everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. All the time, we categorize people. We say he's friendly, he's unfriendly, or any type, or classify people according to the race, or economics, gender. The book also, the Bible, is a book which also categorizes people. It groups, groups everyone into three categories. The Bible categories, um, categorizes people in, under three categories. The natural man or woman, carnal man or woman, spiritual man or woman. Everyone who is listening today will fall into one of these three categories. Whether we accept or not, we are surely in one of these categories. We need to understand that God desires to reveal himself to everyone in the world today. Seven billion people, he wants to reveal himself to them. That he can enter into a personal relationship with them. His desire is that people will come to know him and his son Jesus Christ after they are born again and grow into the maturity of the image of his son. Sadly, not everyone is saved and not all saved people are mature and growing. The Bible offers a plan to grow into maturity. That is why the Christian faith is all about is saying that come to me and I will take your burden. Come to me and I will change you and the, what the Holy Spirit is saying today is that I will make you like Jesus Christ. This should be our greatest pursuit, to be more like Jesus Christ. To do that, we need to know where we are so that we can grow from there. The title of my message today, the three types of people in the church today. My desire from this message is to help you to identify yourself which of those three categories you are in. And then... From there, how to grow into the image of Christ Jesus. The Bible categorizes people, as I said earlier, into natural man, carnal man, and spiritual man. It, natural man means, it also means natural woman, and as carnal woman and spiritual woman. So the first category is the natural man. The person born into this world is a natural man. Paul uses the word for natural man as Sukhikos, he who has absolutely no contact with God. Isaiah 51 12, the Bible says, I, even I am he that comforteth you, who art, that thou should be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass. Man is like grass. Today is there, tomorrow is gone. People die without any foreknowledge most times. Sin has caused man and woman to be immortal. In, sorry, immoral. Being in sin, he seeks to sin. Man's tendency is to sin and be comfortable in the uh, worldly entertainment, worldly life and worldly comfort. We see in Genesis from the time Adam and Eve were banished to the earth, the human race has sunk deeper into sin. So much so that God said in Genesis 6, 5, And God saw the wickedness of man that was great on, in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continuously. God destroyed the whole human race and gave, and gave it a fresh start through the family of Noah. The mixed race with the angels was destroyed in the flood. But sin does not lie dormant. We are born with sin. As man started to multiply, sin even multiplied more. Man got into the habit of sin. Psalm 58, 3, the Bible says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. That is why you do not need to teach a, a child to lie or behave sinfully. We are born with a tendency for it. As the man and woman grow, they develop this nature of sin further. They develop it further and the sin increases in our life. The Bible 
calls this sort of person the natural man. Isaiah 53, 6, the Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We live in our own way. We live in sin. We have, you know, we live in um, whatever lifestyle our parents and our culture and our environment teaches us. Whether it doesn't matter what religion you come from, whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Christian, or even if you are an atheist, we settle in our own ways. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Neither can he know him, because the things of the Spirit of God are spiritually discerned. Spiritual things are discerned spiritually. The natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. Our sins have taken us far away from God. Isaiah 64, 6, the Bible says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Everyone who does not have Christ is a natural man. He or she is in that state that they cannot understand the things of God. Our sharing of the gospel to the natural man will fall on deaf ears unless God opens their ears. The Bible lists many characters of the natural man. Let us see them briefly. The first character of the natural man is that he is depraved or immoral. Immoral means wicked. Everyone who is not washed in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ is guilty of immorality. Paul was writing to the Corinthian church. He wrote in 1 Corinthians 5.10 and described that fornicators or sexually immoral uh, people as covetous and extortioners and idolaters. In other words, the natural man is a man or a woman who follows the things of the world who is entertained by the world, who lives in the world in his own self and he adheres to the worldly moral standards. Paul writes in Ephesians 2.3 Among whom also we had our conversation or the way of life in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and by nature children of wrath even as others. Just imagine our lives before Christ. How did we live? We lived according to the desires of the flesh, lusts of the flesh. There was no control, um, but we'll see who were, uh, we were under control a little later. We were under the wrath of God. That is how the natural man is. So the first thing about the natural man is, is inherently wicked. Second, he is also, he or she is also inherently a sinner by nature. It means that whatever he does, he can never measure up to the standard of God. He never can mention, live up to the law of God. The natural man is prone to sin. He is naturally inclined towards sinning. Like water and electricity, they take the path of least resistance. The Bible says, Romans 3, 10 to 12, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. The natural man is naturally corrupt, naturally wicked, naturally evil, naturally immoral, naturally degenerate, naturally depraved or wicked or uh, evil. The third thing is that he or she is dominated. The natural man or woman, a person who is not saved, is under the control of the devil. There is no other word to describe it. Under the control of the prince of the power of the air. Completely controlled. The devil satisfies by fulfilling the lusts of the flesh and desires of the mind. Conveniently, there are all sorts of philosophies. All sorts of excuses for doing sin, for committing sin. There is always a way to commit sin. There is always all types of entertainment to meet all needs of the flesh. Religiosity, there are many religions to meet the fleshly desires. There is mental satisfaction. 
men think man or woman thinks that they are under total control but sadly it is wrong it is the god of this world is under control is uh, who is in control the natural man thinks he is in control of his destiny they they tend to think that um, they are in control but actually if you see they are dominated by the devil he is under he is under the control of the master puppet uh, who controls the puppet and that is satan the lord jesus said john 8:44 you and your you are of your father the devil the lusts of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it and then again romans 6:20 the bible says for when he were servants of sin he were free from righteousness so natural man is a servant of sin sin is his or her master he you are a, you the natural man is under the spell of sin which causes disobedience to god by the bible says a person who is born again a person who comes to christ jesus is changed from being a servant of sin and become and comes to god and becomes a servant of god now the fourth thing about the natural man the natural man is blinded in second corinthians 4:4 the bible says in whom the god of this world had blinded the minds of men which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel who is the image of god should shine upon them the light of the gospel the tracts we give the word that we speak the natural man cannot get it because he is blinded unless god opens this blindness the blind man cannot receive it many of us were like that till god opened our eyes nicodemus in the bible was like that he was a master or a teacher in israel and could not grasp the truth lord told nicodemus in john 3:10 jesus answered and said unto him art thou a master of israel and knowest not these things we must understand this just because a natural man reads the bible hears from the bible reads your tract he may not never understand the gospel he may never understand the gospel god has to open his eyes it, while it is true this is true of the natural man as believers we have a big responsibility to pray to god that these eyes will be opened the you can give a million tracts but if there is no prayer if there is no gap wrestling in prayer for the eyes to be opened we may have very few results so that's a big responsibility in first corinthians 1:18 the bible says for the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved is the power of god whenever the natural man hears about the cross it is foolishness to him he may have some temporary compassion he may think oh what a great deed it is but he will never go take the step to say oh a savior has died for me i give up everything for him unless god opens his eyes the natural man doesn't understand the people of god the natural man will criticize um, the believers because they bother him too much or her too much and he may not tell you why you are bothering him so much or her so much it is like a deaf man who is who is criticizing music he cannot hear it but he criticizes it yeah, or a blind man appreciating art or um, looking down on art he had no he cannot see it but he still does it it is only lord jesus who can remove this blindness no one else can you remember the blind man lord healed in john 9:25 what did that man say whether he be a sinner or no i know not one thing i know whereas i was blind now i see hallelujah when lord jesus touches the blind people will start to see so you have somebody in your life in your relatives in your friends who cannot see what you are telling them about christ it is time to go on your knees and ask god to open the blind eyes the fifth thing about the natural man that he is spiritually dead the spirit part of the natural man is dead when adam said sin god said if you eat the tree a fruit of this tree you will die he did not die physically 
but he died spiritually. As the population increased, most of them, most of the people lost their connection with God. The natural man inherited death from Adam. Romans 5.21, the Bible says, then as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Christ Jesus our Lord. Death reigns in us because the spiritual part which needs to connect to God is dead. So we cannot uh, be responsive to God. Um, the natural man is unresponsive to God and the things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. We saw this verse before. God's things have no interest for the natural man. A, a natural man does not like to think or, or you know, even have anything to do with God. Romans 1.28 the Bible says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Today the, in the world, natural man is sinning. There is so much destruction. There is so much sin. Because God has given them over, over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate mind means a mind which God has rejected. They started to do things which are not pleasing to God. There are many pious, honest, good people in this world, but not all of them get saved. Not all of them openly receive God's word when you preach to them, because their mind is reprobate, is rejected. It is essential for Christians all over the world to pray earnestly for the salvation of these people. Only God can save them. Using trickery to convert them, undue influence to convert them, will make them only twice the candidate for hell. The sixth thing about a natural man is a natural man is without hope. Ephesians 2.12, the Bible says, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. Hell is the only guaranteed future for the natural man. A person who is born once will die twice. A person who is born twice will die once. The Bible says, Hebrews 9.27, As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. The natural man is going to die without hope. And then he is going to face judgment, the white throne judgment before the king of kings and lord of lords. It is going to be a difficult time for that man to answer God. Just imagine all our friends, relatives, neighbors, acquaintances who have known us and we have not told the gospel will be standing before God. They'll, they'll be telling, Lord, your servant was with me. We ate together. We had dinner together. We had lunch together. But nobody gave me the gospel. That it will be a terrible time at that time. Maybe we did not pray enough. Maybe we were not consistent enough to tell the gospel. Maybe we did not pursue them enough with the gospel. Just think about it. The natural man needs the Christian to wrestle with God for God to open his eyes. Amen? Now, we go to the carnal man. It is the second category which the Bible categorizes. Now, the second category is called the carnal man or the carnal woman. Paul uses the Greek word sarkikos. That is, sark means flesh. Sarkikos for the carnal man. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. This type of person, listen to me carefully, is saved, but not changed at all. He has never grown in the Lord. He is always defeated by flesh, by the world, by the devil. Sadly, it is possible for Christians to be carnal. A carnal Christian is motivated by flesh instead of being motivated by the spirit. Therefore, he becomes dependent on the flesh. Carnal cannot take meat. He, needs the, he or she needs the milk. Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 3, with great detail, 
about carnal Christians or carnal man, dependent. The first character of a carnal man is that they are dependent. 1 Corinthians 3, 2, the Bible says, I have fed you with milk, not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither are you yet able. The carnal man or woman is totally dependent on others for spiritual nourishment. You see, he, the person cannot teach. He is always needs to be taught. Hebrews 5, 12, 13, the Bible says, For when the time he ought to be teachers, he need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. The carnal Christian cannot serve. He always wants to be served. He cannot get the spiritual truth from God's word. The pastor needs to spoon feed him or her when he shows up in or he she shows up in church. He is helpless spiritually speaking. The carnal Christian is a baby Christian. Imagine a baby is born. The parents are so delighted, wonderful. We have a baby. They send out invitations. They have celebration. Imagine after one year the baby remains a baby. How bad it will be. Will you still celebrate? Nobody will celebrate. They will get upset. A carnal Christian is like that. He never grows up or she never grows up from when they are, car uh, when they are grown. Always wanting milk. Hard food is difficult to digest. The Corinthian church was like that. Full of babies. Paul told them, I am not giving you deeper truths, the hard meat of the word of God. The carnal Christian, so occupied in his own thing or her own thing and pleasures, that they are of no use to others. They cannot pray for anybody, they cannot visit anybody, they cannot look after anybody, but they are only they are not even able to look after themselves. Carnal Christians expect to be hand fed and led by the hand. They are more interested in themselves than others. Even Bible reading and prayer are almost non-existent in their life. Paul continues in 1 Corinthians 3 about the Corinthian church. He calls them carnal Christians. In 1 Corinthians 3, 3 he says, <coughs> For he has it, carnal, for whereas there is even among you envying, strife, divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Envying, strife, divisions, walking as unbelievers. Envying. A carnal Christian tends to envy. Envy means it is not jealousy. You must realize envy is a particular word. Envy means painful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by somebody else with a desire to possess the same advantage. I repeat again. Envy means a painful awareness of an advantage enjoyed by another joined with a desire to possess the same advantage. What it means is, envy is a pain when somebody is enjoying something good with the desire, the pain is accompanied by the desire to get what somebody else is enjoying. Excuse me please. This is a common sickness in churches today. If pastor uh, fails to talk something or smiles to a person, the person gets offended. If the person, uh, if a pastor or elder um, rebukes somebody, they get offended. Mm. These are the characteristics of the carnal Christian. They, they want to enjoy privileges which they don't have. If God, if God speaks to someone, doesn't speak to someone, they get offended. If during lunch or dinner, somebody is taken care of more and somebody is not in the church, they get offended. This is childish behavior. This is the sign of a carnal Christian. That is why Paul calls them babies who drink milk. James 3.16, the Bible says, For where they envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Wherever there is strife, there is confusion and evil work. 
So wherever there are carnal Christians, there will be strife and there will be evil work. Whereas the church was called to do God's work. You see how much carnal Christians affect the church. A small joke or a word spoken out of place, the carnal Christian will feel very offended. It is called the sickness of envying. The whole effort of the pastor, of the elders, to go and pacify this person now, take time out of doing God's work to now, you know, to comfort the, this Christian is like taking care of a baby. When the baby is cries, you have to drop everything and go and comfort the baby. Carnal Christians are exactly like this. The, sec, the um, carnal Christians cannot retain the word of God. <clears throat> the revelation of God is like water on stone. It just flows and nothing is left after that. The stone doesn't absorb any water. Similarly, they cannot absorb God's word. The carnal Christian is always filled by himself or his things or her things. They are not so much worried about the things of God. The carnal Christian always puts uh, himself or uh, herself above God's work. The carnal uh, gets, uh, Christian gets satisfaction out of envying or provoking one another. The Galatians 5.26, the Bible says, Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. The second thing Paul wrote, if you see in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 3, he said, uh, the second thing is, uh, first thing is envying, second thing is strife. Now strife, this is another very special sickness of the Christians, the new Christians. Proverbs 28-25 He that is of a proud heart stirreth of strife. He that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Strife is almost always a result of pride. Pride comes in all forms. Some you can see, some you can't see. We can only know pride from the actions. The carnal Christian is always looking to fight for something. They are willing to tear the church to pieces over silly mature issues. They are easily offended and quickly fight, uh, aggressively defend their position. Many churches have been destroyed by this strife. A carnal Christian cannot pray peacefully because he, his mind is, or her mind is full of offenses. The mind is full of justification for all the wrongs they have perceived. The, this great desire to justify their position and justify and satisfy the pride will cause strife. Carnal th Christians think they are so spiritual yet destroy churches. And they try to uh, bring the interpretation of the word of God to their standard. They won't rise to the standard of the word of God. And uh, they try to dictate their teaching or their impressions or their theology on the pastor and the elders. It's a sad thing, but many carnal Christians do that. The fourth thing of a um, character of a carnal Christian always causes division. They want to gather like-minded people against others who are opposed. They will never base their position on scripture. Sometimes they will twist scriptures to prove their point. There have been many churches which have been broken because of divisive people. Like Paul says, Romans 7, 14, he said, For I, we know the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Paul also, when he was a new believer, he was carnal. But he grew into a spiritual man. This is what a carnal Christian should do. That they should submit their all the weaknesses to God and pray, Lord, I don't want these weaknesses. I don't want to be strivers with strife. I don't want to divide. I don't want to be, you know, envying. I want to remove all these things. He, he has to constantly pursue with God or she has to constantly pursue with God. A carnal Christian is dominated by the same sinful nature which was with him or her before he or she was born again. The fifth thing about a carnal Christian or a carnal man is a defeated, they are defeated man or woman. 
like Paul in Romans 7, he, uh, he, he says that he could not walk spiritually, constantly losing the battle of flesh, constantly losing, losing the battle of the world and of the devil. And uh, neither can a carnal Christian war spiritually. He, he, is not, he or she is not able to wear the uh, whole armor of God. Some pieces are missing because of various reasons and, and or sometimes he doesn't know how to use this armor. And because he is carnal, he will try to fight the devil, he or she will try to fight the devil with carnal weapons. It's not possible because 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds. We have to fight the spiritual battle with spiritual weapons. The spiritual weapons will come by association and fellowship and growing into the fellowship of God. The carnal Christian cannot work spiritually. He, the carnal Christian is not of much use to the kingdom of God. They, they hardly win souls. They, they may support the church sometimes, and, but they don't teach because they don't have anything in them to teach. And uh, the involvement in church is up to his, his or her comfort zone. They won't go outside the comfort zone. He, they're always riding on the effort of others. If you are one of them, I don't know. Please let me remind you, the Lord Jesus did not save you to stay in one place or stagnate. He has called you to serve him, to glorify him, to please him, to reflect his glory in this dark world today. Today would be a very good time to pray to God and throw out this uh, flesh and old uh, fleshly and carnal attitude and laziness, whatever it is that has caused us to remain as carnal Christians and get it right with the Lord. Hallelujah! Now we go to the third category which the Bible categorizes. It is the spiritual man or woman. Paul calls the spiritual man in Greek pneumaticos. A spiritual man or woman has a living, growing personal relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a religious uh, relationship. It is not to show others how the relationship is or it is not a philosophy. It is as a result of spending time and having this constant communication with God. He has the, he or she has the spiritual capacity to live differently from the old life which he or she came from. The spiritual man, person's life is governed by the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Spirit alone. He, he, the spiritual man or woman gets into the word and allows the word to speak. Many times we read the word of God which is convenient to us. But we have to read God's word so that the word, word of God can read us. It is told uh, in Africa there was a girl who got saved and she was all the time reading the Bible. So the other people in the village was uh, making fun of this girl and they said, what you are reading the Bible all the time? The girl said, all other books I can read but this is the only book which reads me. Hallelujah! The word of God reads us. The word of God guides us. The word of God is like a mirror which shows us who we are. The spiritual man's life is empowered by the word and by the spirit. So the first characteristic of a spiritual man is he walks in the spirit, not in the flesh. The Bible says, Romans 8.1. My favorite chapter, Roman 8. Roman 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What it means is there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who do not walk in the flesh but walk in the spirit. The transfer has to take place. After receiving Christ we cannot remain in sin. We have to progress to a spiritual life. We need to compare our lives today to lives what we are living before. 
before born again and after born again. If there is no difference, then we are remaining carnal Christians. That is why the Bible says there is no condemnation for those who walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. A spiritual Christian will not continue to walk in flesh. He desires to grow and he will make every availability for the Holy Spirit and for the word of God to transform his or her life. The Bible says in 518, Therefore, as by offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to justification of life. Righteousness is a free gift. I know that. Bible says that. Christians are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. But if you take that verse out of context, then you think that whatever we do, we are righteous before God. But God's word always has a qualification. You have to match whatever you are thinking with the rest of the word of God. Now let's listen to Romans 8.4. What does the Bible say? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. The truth, the free gift is active when we walk in the spirit, not when we walk in the flesh. The righteousness cannot be fulfilled in our life or it will be our life is not transformed into righteousness of God if we walk in the flesh but if we walk only if we walk in the spirit. As general practice today that as it is being taught only half truth that they say that the you are the righteousness of God and you and people think that they can live whichever way they want and they are still righteousness before God. Sadly, that is a wrong teaching because the Bible says, if you go further in Romans 8, Romans 8, 8, he says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Imagine if you cannot please God here, how are you going to please him in heaven when you see him face to face? It's almost impossible. So a person who is a spiritual person, the first characteristic of that person he, will, he or she will not walk in the flesh, but will walk in the spirit. The second characteristic of a spiritual man is they are going to be led by the spirit. Every step of this man or woman is directed by the Holy Spirit, by the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. You recognize, you learn to recognize the voice of the spirit when you spend time in prayer with God. That when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we will know it. Not that some people, when it is convenient, will say, Oh, God spoke to me today. Or when it is something good, God, He says, God spoke to me today. When it is not good, they think it is not God speaking. Because they don't know what God is speaking. But the Galatians 5.16, Paul says, This is why I say then, Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. It's quite natural for a human being to fall into the lusts of the flesh. It is in various forms. We are weak in many areas. We tend to fall in that area. But what happens? If you leave it just like that, it will cause you um, a problem in all your life. It will cause you a problem. We should now take that fall and go to God and say, Lord, I have fallen. I don't want to fall again. What do I need to do? Pursue with the Spirit of God. So that it is prevented next time. That is the way of growth. You, you slowly chop off all things which are not necessary. As Christians, we neglect this very much. There is very few, um, you know, uh, very few people really pursue God about the weaknesses and about their failings. We, we, uh, you know, as Christians, we should be unhappy with our failures. We have to be a, but what happens? We try to excuse ourselves. Oh, we got angry this time. Next time I'll be careful. I won't be angry, but it will never work. The Lord Holy Spirit has to remove that problem from our lives. The spiritual man or woman is unhappy with the failures in life. The focus is on the Spirit of God to listen to the Spirit of God and find out, Lord, how can I prevent it next time? So that it will not happen in my life. So then you remove this and slowly you are gradually being transformed 
into the image of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Listening daily to the Spirit and um, so that we will know His voice. Not very rarely you listen to God's Spirit. Occasionally you hear from God it's, and when some problems are pressurizing us, so we take the easy way out and say, God spoke to me to take this way. That is not the way we listen to God's Spirit. It is a, it's a life uh, style. It is not a once in a while occurrence. Because the Bible says, Acts 2, 28-29, that in the last days, the Spirit of God is going to be poured out on everyone. All of us have the Spirit of God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have God as sons of God, the daughters of God. We are given the right to listen to the Holy Spirit. The third characteristic of um, spiritual man he, or woman is he learns from the spirit. The spiritual man is able to grasp or receive the truths of the word of God as opposed to the natural man cannot receive the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man discerns these things spiritually. He is not, um, you know, he's not blocked off from the spiritual things as he or she was when they were unsaved. He is able to grasp spiritual things and he can understand the Bible and can, uh, you know, and enjoy the presence of God. God's words are not foolishness to him. They are necessary food. Like what Job said in Job 23, 12. He said, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I esteemed the words of his mouth more than the necessary food. Amen. What a wonderful thing Job said. He, he said, your words are like food to me. We have to desire God's word like food. How much we desire God's word? We desire God's word like food. The fourth thing about uh, the spiritual man is he is liberated by the spirit. The spiritual man is liberated from bondage to flesh, the world and the devil. I mean, Christian, the spiritual man is made free from most of the things which used to dominate him, dominate him or her. In Romans 8.2, the Bible says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. But see, you know, instead of doing whatever I was doing before, I now watch my step. I now watch my character. I now watch my behavior. I now watch my thoughts. And everything unclean, I just go to God and say, Lord, these things I don't like. Lord, help me get over it. I want to be like Christ. That is the overriding desire. So the word of God becomes like food. The Christian is able to discern and judge things. Judging and examining every aspect of his life or her life to match the image of Christ. The world may not be impressed. We are not doing this for the world. We will, the world will think you are crazy. But that's fine. But we are doing it for the sake of Christ. The fifth thing about the spiritual man is he is taught by the Spirit of God. It is where God controls your mind, your hearts and your thoughts, your feet, your tongue. And everything in your life is yielded to the Holy Spirit. Nothing is held back from the Lord. I know it is a tall order. You, you may think, oh, how can people be like that? But it's a step-by-step -step process. You have to step into it one step at a time. First deal with known sins. And then when, when those sins are gone, Lord will take over. Or He will show you some sins. Leave it to God. Walk with the Holy Spirit. Nothing, hold nothing back from God. Surrender everything. Because we are indwelt with the Spirit, the spiritual man is able to understand what the Spirit of God wants. And he will show us the way to live. In 1 Corinthians 2.13, the Bible says, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but with what the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Not many people achieve this level. But, you know, 
God is able to do, make us do it. God is able to give us the uh, grace and the mercy and the power and the wisdom to help us achieve it. But we have to start to grow. We cannot remain where we are. Because if we remain there, we tend to be carnal Christians. We will not be uh, spiritual Christians. And this, um, you know, this life of spiritual life is not for a particular elite group. It's intended for every believer. The Holy Spirit is given to everyone. The goal is to be like Christ Jesus. To, be, to make us spiritually minded. To make us spiritually driven. This is the purpose of this of uh, you know the spirit of god working with us this is the purpose where the we are the temple of the holy spirit the holy spirit is our master the holy spirit is our counselor the holy spirit is the person we should know more than anybody in this world we should know him more than our uh, spouse we should know him more than our child we should know him more than our parents we should know him more than anybody because it is he who knows who we are it is he who knows every thought of our mind. He, it is he who knows everything God's plan has for us. It is he who brings God's plan and, and changes us to meet and become what God intends us to be. That is the key of a spiritual man. A spiritual man will have this fellowship of the Holy Spirit. He will, he will work with the whole Lord Holy Spirit. And he will walk in the word of God. He will use God's word to rule his life. Amen? Not somebody what somebody is saying. Not by what somebody is doing. Or self, selfish desire. So these are the three categories the Bible says there are people in this world. Any, uh, you, anybody who is hearing, you will fall in one of these categories. The if you are a natural man, you are immoral, you are sinner by nature, you are blinded, spiritually dead and without hope. And there is hope for you. Christ Jesus died on the cross 2000, more than 2000 years ago. He suffered on the cross for us. He was nailed on the cross. He was beaten that his blood flowed. His blood flowed because he is the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. You, are, you can go to him and say, Lord, I bring this Lord Jesus Christ to you. He died on the cross for me. And I bring him as the sacrifice for my sin. Wash me from my sin. And then God can do that for you. And then you will be born into the kingdom of God. And then you will understand the things of God, the spirit of God. And if you have already done that, there are many people who have done it, but are unable to grow past who they were before, who were in the flesh before. They are like the carnal Christians. They are unable to take the deep things of the word of God. They only can take milk. They are susceptible to envying, to strife, to division. They are unable to receive God. They are always causing divisions. I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. I am of this. I am of... And they try to make divisions. I suggest one thing. It is... You are not walking in the spirit. You are walking in the flesh. You, you must surrender your life to God. You must say, Lord, I did pray the prayer. I did ask you to cleanse my sin. But unfor unfor un Lord, in every way, I have not been any different. It is time for you to change me, Lord. Now is the time, Lord, to change me. What type of person are you? I want to ask you this question today. Where do you fit in these categories? It is a time to make a reality check. Where do you sit? If you are living naturally, as I said, you need to repent and come to Christ. And Christ can cleanse you and be saved. If you are a carnal Christian, you need to do some serious repenting. Serious praying. And serious Bible reading to allow the Holy Spirit to change your change you from this state to a spiritual person. And if you are a spiritual man or a woman, you need to be growing more and more. More and more to be like Lord Jesus Christ. The world is looking for such people. The world is looking for a spiritual Christian. The world is looking for a demonstration of the face of Christ. The world is looking for a demonstration of the power of Christ. The world is looking for a demonstration of the reality of Christ. 
Don't go just by he healing, by tongues, all these people are not so much interested in that. Yes, people will crowd you for healing, they'll go back. That's not what the world is looking for. The world is looking for Jesus Christ, the reality of Jesus Christ. Only you and me as spiritual Christians can provide it to the world. That they will also come to Christ Jesus. Our, our efforts sometimes, we ourselves break the efforts what we put. Because we never want to be spiritual Christians. Because being a spiritual Christian involves sacrifice. You have to give up your comfort zone. You have to give up your daily life. You have to give up sleep. Sometimes you have to give up food. Sometimes you have to give up so many things. Because the, the, it all depends on what the Spirit of God deals with you. You have to be open to it. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. What is the Lord speaking to you today? Where do you stand? Are you natural man or woman? Are you a carnal man or woman? Or are you a spiritual man or woman? This message is for all of you. God is looking to change you. If you are carnal and if you remain the same as what you were before, it is time to grow, my dear brothers and sisters. It is time to go to God. You can hear 100 messages a day, but it will not change you till you submit yourself to the um, um, mastership of the Holy Spirit, to the working of the Holy Spirit, to the instruction of the Holy Spirit. I beg of you, my dear brothers and sisters, submit yourself. It is worth it. It is worth it to give up everything for Christ. If today Christ says, give up everything and go, mm. we must be willing to do that. So let us commit to God, if you are a carnal Christian, to commit to God that, Lord, yes, I give myself to you. I want to be spiritual. And if you are spiritual, I encourage you to continue to grow into the image of Christ. The world needs a witness. The world needs the perfume of the gospel. The world needs the demonstration of the power of God. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. Lord, your word is true. Your word, Lord, reveals the innermost things in our heart, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as this word has gone forth, I pray that everyone who have heard, Lord, will make a decision today. If, we, if they are carnal, they will make a decision to be spiritual. If they are spiritual, they will make a decision, Lord, to grow. And if they are natural, they will make a decision to be saved. Thank you, Father. I commit them into your hands. I commit your word into your hands. Be thou glorified and be thou exalted. In the name of our Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.